jungle justice still rampant. When the mob, that mob, lynched those four innocent young men in Port Harcourt a decade ago, there was such a public outcry against mob justice. I remember I was in Port Harcourt at the time, spoke with a few of their family members. Um, um, the outrage nationally was insane, you know. Uh, some of the killers were tried and convicted. A lot of voices at the time said that maybe, you know, maybe, just maybe we were turning a corner as a society when it comes to rule of law, when it comes to monopoly of violence, when it comes to due process. There was so much hope, but that wasn't the case. Here's today's big hard fact. According to SBM Intelligence, there have been 279 incidents of mob violence since 2019, claiming 391 lives. So as you can see, Nigerians are still taking law uh, into their own hands and killing their fellow human beings on the spot for alleged crimes. Today we're talking about the Alo 4 case. It's, uh, we're talking about its legacy. We're talking about the socio-cultural reasons why um, even though we say we know better, we say we hate it, Nigerians are still murdering other Nigerians in the name of um, justice, ironically. My guest is a journalist with uh, the BBC who just produced some work on the Alu 4 uh, 10th anniversary. His name is Nduka Ojin Moore. Uh, he's uh, going to join us in a bit. But Lagos, we want to hear from you. What do you think are the reasons that Nigerians still resort to mob justice? Have you ever witnessed a lynching or an attempted lynching? What did you do to try and stop it? Did you try to stop it? Do you remember the Alo 4 case? Men call me on 0700-993-993-993. Women call me on 01465-7190. Now we're streaming this uh, conversation live on Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3, YouTube Nigeria Info FM. Now for those of you who do not remember uh, the Alo 4 case, for those of you who've never heard of it, perhaps because you're in Lagos and this thing happened in Port Harcourt, um, before I speak with Ndoka, I want to play a board for you that Ndoka work himself put together for the BBC. If you are watching our live stream, I'll also play the video for you. You'll see the video of the report there. But for those of you who are probably driving home and therefore you cannot watch the live stream for yourself, let me play the audio for, uh, for you right here. Again, our live stream, Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3, YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. She was crying. I asked her what was the problem. She said they have killed Rukunna. Nigeria is a place where people don't seem to have value for human life because there are so many places in the world where that incident cannot happen. Exactly 10 years ago, four students of the University of Port Harcourt were killed by an angry mob. Now, they had been wrongly accused of robbery, thousands worked, and many filmed as they were brutally murdered. This is the story of the Alu 4. Five AM, October fifth, two thousand and twelve. Four university students run into the local community patrol. At that time of the morning, suspicions arose, especially as there had been robberies in that area. Accused of being petty thieves, they are taken to a mock trial where they are found guilty immediately. Their punishment is handed out. They are stripped, beaten, and taken to a pit where what happens next is too horrific for words. But by the early morning, they were dead. I am Nduka Ojinmo, a BBC journalist from Port Harcourt. I know Alu community very well. Now, I remember when this happened. I was in Port Harcourt at the time, so I still remember it. It was the first mob killing in Nigeria to go viral. Now, when this happened, there was widespread outrage and debates about Nigeria's judicial system. People were actually there 
laughing, jeering, taking pictures of other people who were being slaughtered. But despite all that shock and anger, mob killings continue to happen in Nigeria. People like Kyo Briggs feel that the government isn't doing enough to stop them. It seems like if you don't if you don't raise your voice, uh, the right things will not uh, will not be done. And yes, there was uh, definitely a feeling in me that um, the system, the government, the judiciary, even the federal government, uh, ought to be aware of what has happened in a place in a so-called place of education. So we have talked about the government. What about the people? What is it that drives them to such extremes? The failure of governance or failure of the criminal justice is one very potent reason for this. Because people are no longer interested in what happens there as a result of the failure of the criminal justice system. This is Dr. Destiny, a lecturer at the University of Port Harcourt who specializes in criminology. He explains why it seems there's a loss of value for human life in Nigeria. We have had cases of war, conflict, cultism, political instability, toggery, and all of those, you know, that in at the end results in the loss of lives. And so violence largely has become a culture in this part of the world. But behind these attacks are real people with stories of their own. Ugona and Lloyd were aspiring rappers. Tekena was Lloyd's cousin, and Chiadika formed the fourth member of their youthful crew. They were soft children. You know that kind of thing, like privileged, yes. You know, you know when you say an Ajabota now, you say you know that this person is Ajabota. Ugona especially, you know, he had that very baby look with his afro and all of that. There's no reason why anybody should die like that. There's no reason. There's no as in there's no reason at all. Three men were sentenced for life in 2017, including one police officer, for their roles in the killing of the students. Now, for Ugona's father, that is enough proof that the system works. If the judiciary were not to be trusted, I'm sure they would not even have concluded that case till date. But I had the strong belief that the judiciary could be trusted. Nigeria's constitution guarantees everyone the right to life, dignity, and fair hearing, making mob killings a punishable crime. The killing of the Alu 4 was 10 years ago. Nigerians have since moved on. But for Ugona's father, time is a keen reminder of the loss of a beloved son. He would have been 28 by now, yes. And certainly, would have been out of school, maybe finished his youth service. Possibly, he may not even have been in Nigeria now. And then, being the first son and only son, I may have also wanted him to get married early so that I have that assurance that he has started building up himself. A very sobering report. Nduka, thank you so much for putting that together. Now let's talk. Um, what was it about the Alu 4 that uh, captured Nigerians, in your opinion? Was it just the fact that social media was very new? Because 2012 was when we're all still just getting on social media. Uh, yeah. So was it because social media was very new and this was one of the first cases that went viral? Was it the identity of the victims, these young, bubbly students? Was it the gruesome way they were killed? What was it? I think it's a combination of um, all, all the factors you've, you've mentioned. Um, but probably the, the most important was the fact that it was captured um, on phones. I mean, back in 2012, Facebook and Twitter um, didn't have the sort of regulations that they do have now. Mm. It, was, it was lax then, mm. so things could, could get on to those platforms um, without being pulled down immediately. Mm. Um, 
because that wasn't the first time we had a mob killing in Nigeria. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it happened before then, but that was the first time we were coming face to face, you know, with, with it, it. We were yeah. confronted with it. Um, so I think that was a major factor. But the, the place it happened also, this was in a university environment, you know, where you're supposed to have the the best of society, supposedly. Mm-hmm. Um, and people would argue that Alu was um, a village, you know, behind the university. But the, the fact that it's around that school, that same place you would expect that you know the energy from the university the, the intellect that is generated would have, would have permeated into that community mm. and that was surprising and of course the ages of those boys those boys were, they were young they were you know young. Uh, yeah 18 19 20 mm. um yeah so I, I think it was a combination of, of all of three factors mm. you got to talk to their family members you got to talk to their friends 10 years yeah. on how mm. have they cope with it my heart broke for the father at the end of that documentary there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Mr. Buzo, mm-hmm. Mr. Yo Buzo. He, he's one of the parents who have not really been out there, you know, uh, speaking to, to the media. He's not really talked about this. Mm-hmm. So I guess the healing process from, from him has been different compared to um, the other family, mm-hmm. um, and the, the Tokus, um, Tokumaik and, and his wife, who have always been out there. Tokumaik is a journalist. It, so. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so the grieving process for them, I think, is complete. Um, when I also spoke to them, they said they were done with it. They had moved on. They had to move from from their old house to a new one because they kept receiving this sympathy. You know, sorry, you sorry, and and um, the the wife said she kept remembering that incident, so they moved out. Mister Buzo, I, I don't think he's 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 really got you know he's right. He told on. me he has. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the, the way he spoke. Um, probably because it was the first time he was he was coming to, to speak about it publicly, um, but you could still see that grief. Um, and, and this were like first sons at the time. Mm-hmm. That was his only son at that time. He's, he's now gone on and to have two other sons, but of course he can't replace human life. Yeah. But that, that was his only son at, at the time, so um, you can really understand how deeply, deeply touched um, uh, he, he was after that incident. Hmm. Why is jungle justice so rampant here? This is a question I ask all the time on this show. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you're a fellow journalist, so perhaps you'll have the answers for me. Why is it so rampant here? What are the factors that lead Nigerians to kill those that they suspect of crimes? I think it's a, it's, it's, um, it's a failure of the state. It's um it's a failure of governance. It's you would call that a failure of the judiciary. That's the policing and the and the, the court system itself. Mm-hmm. Um but that's a reflection of the failure of of, of governance. Mm-hmm. Where you in the past you've had people who have been suspects who have been handed over to the police, you know, and um the next thing you see them out there, you know, um going about their, their businesses. I remember when I lived in Port Harcourt. We had um, this guy who was arrested by the community um, group, you know, the, the vigilantes, as they called them. And, and we all knew that he, he, he was a suspected criminal. Mm. He was handed over to the police. And a week later, we saw him. And I get what he did. Once he came out, he went to the house of this, um, the leader of the, the local vigilante, you know, and had like, um, that one barely escaped his life. Mm. So it's that shield of the policing system where, you know, justice is not seen to be done. Mm. Justice, again, is delayed. Because mm. Justice delayed is it's almost like you're not getting anything out of it. Mm. Um Two years ago, there was this report from the ICPC, and it talked about um, the corruption in the judiciary. Mm-hmm. You know, he said, well, um, almost nine billion naira was paid as bribing that, that sector. He said the judiciary is the most corrupt arm of government in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Um, so that tells you that justice is available, to, you know, to be bought. Mm-hmm. Justice is available to be sold. Mm-hmm. And l- l- let's be frank, our police is not it's not the best in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if you speak to five Nigerians, I'm, I'm pretty sure three of them will tell you don't really have the confidence in the police to deliver justice. So that is why jungle justice happens, one of the reasons. The other reason which um, one of the experts I spoke to talked about, and which made sense to me, was there's cultural violence in Nigeria at the moment, um, uh, Sandra. Um, I don't know what it is like in your newsroom, um, but 10 years ago, five people dying probably make the headline story yeah but think of it now if five people die in nigeria it'd be like mm, I, yeah they don't to, exactly you know yeah i don't think five is a high number i know that five human beings dying doesn't make the headlines yeah. it tells you it tells you how far we've gone in terms of you know losing value for human life and it's, it's not hard to see why 
cultural violence in Nigeria is staggering. There's anywhere you turn to northeast, northwest, you know, in the southeast, there's violence everywhere. So there's that there's too much bloodshed in Nigeria. Mm. Um so that that's why it's happened. On, another reason for and I really didn't want to explore this um but maybe I should discuss that with you now. People have talked about rising poverty and how you know there's this saying that a hungry man is an angry man. Mm. Um people have said, look, things have gotten worse in the last seven years. Things mm. have gotten worse. Mm. Yeah. People are, are more hostile. People are more aggressive. You know, people are losing their jobs. There's high inflation. Their, their money is losing value. So all that's... Um, all that is transferred yeah. into any little... Exactly. You know, exactly. so 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 it's it's what I like to call a pecking order of violence, you know. So, yeah, the, yeah. so the state is oppressing you, so you look for who to oppress. And sometimes exactly. it's yeah. an innocent person who is in the wrong place at the wrong time, you know. And someone mm-hmm. just shouts, ole, or thief. And it's like, oh yeah, let me take my frustrations out on yeah. this person who could be innocent. I want to come back to the point you made about law enforcement. Um, yeah. You know, people often talk about that, you know, lack of confidence in law enforcement, right? Mm. But here is my pushback on that. Okay. If it was just distrust of the system, mm. you wouldn't see torture and lynching. Maybe you'd see them catching a thief, maybe tying up the thief, maybe holding the thief hostage, maybe forcing them to repay. Um, You won't see them escalate a stolen phone into a petrol and tire and fire. There seems to be a high level of malice needed to do that, no? Yeah, I, I I see where you're going with that. Um, Mr. Abuzo said it was cannibalism. You know, he, he said the people that murdered his his son and his friends, people that killed them, that it derived pleasure from from doing, from doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, it, and think of it, you know, there are thousands there. People people stood. People were were watching. People were recording we're it on their phones. Mm-hmm. Where what, what kind of human beings would would stand by you know, and almost take pleasure in, in watching Someone others being killed. burn and die. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. You, you do have a point there. The, the, the gruesomeness of it points perhaps to something else. I don't know what that is. It's probably for anthropologists to explore. Mm. Don't forget, was it two months ago, the guy in Italy, mm. the Nigerian who was, yes, who was who killed was on the streets of Italy. Mm-hmm. E- exactly. He, he was strangled and People stood by and watched, and, and, and no one could do anything. Um, so is there something about the human mind? Is there, is there something? I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's um, the thought of it scares me <laughs> to think that um, yeah, be, be, because what, what you're pointing out is something is something quite scary. Yeah. The the haste with which you know people are you, and and the, the manner you bring tires, you know, you tie them up, you you. And it's usually slow and very painful. You yeah. know, you, you could. It's not. It's not quick. It's not quick. It's not. What is it about? It's not quick and it's not pretty. Okay, I, I, I oh. have. I have to take a very short break. Um, okay. Um, but we will continue this conversation. Uh, Lagos really, really need, needs to hear this. Yes. So, are you looking for a job right here in Lagos? Um, Caribbean Nigeria is introducing an exciting journey to build a career and own a business. Now, with a line of generational business success spanning over 100 years, here is an opportunity to meet with an ambitious team and earn over 120,000 naira weekly for yourself. Are you interested? Please call these numbers 081-570-50505 or 0905-637-4258. Or zero nine zero six two eight two zero zero five three to book an interview. And please note, having a car is an added advantage. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so we've got a few minutes before we have to take like a longer commercial break. Um, but I do want to uh, uh, explore something a bit, uh, a bit very quickly. Um, whenever we talk about um, mob justice and lynchings. I always think about the people who took part, you know, and then went away. Most of the perpetrators in Alo that day, they never saw justice. They've gone about their lives for 10 years as normal, you know. Do you think as a society, 
it is worth exploring what it is about us that lets us switch on this murder switch and then switch it back off and go about our lives, you know? Because apart from mob justice, we also see it with religious clashes, tribal clashes, elections, even university cult clashes, you know? Do we have a society and a culture that makes murder easy, do you think? That's a hard one to answer. Um, that's a really hard one to answer. Hmm. Um, I'll probably go back to the, the culture of violence I talked about, you oh, know, yeah. the raging widespread violence across Nigeria. Mm. That's making it look almost, for lack of a better word, now almost fashionable mm. to, to spill blood. Um, now you talked about cultism in, in universities also and, and the, the pleasure um, which um, I saw students when I when I school in Port Harcourt, you know, the, the pleasure they derived from from taking part in all that. Mm. Um, but back to the to the Alu four case itself, um, the, the police said there were at least three thousand people there, mm. you know, that that were witnessed that whole thing. Uh, and, uh, some of them took part in it. Mm -hmm. Only three of them, only three were convicted for life in in 2017. So you have thousands, you know, <clears throat> probably the dozens that took part directly in it were well, 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 mm -hmm. Yeah, free as as you said now. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted. I probably wanted to explore um, to answer your question um, the level of illiteracy in, in Nigeria and how that perhaps how that could contributes. explain mm. exactly. Because if you think of mob justice and the way it happens, it really happens on the streets. It really happens, you know, multi-pack areas. Markets. Um, yeah, mm. there isn't probably any level of of anger Sandra that you would feel that would make you get physical with someone no. or um you, you wouldn't even engage you know in in, in stripping someone tying them and, and you, you wouldn't do that yeah? yeah um so it's it's people of a certain level of um of enlightenment that, that tend to take part in all that but but, now, but, I, but, I, but I but I hear that and I raise you what mm -hmm. happened in Sokoto because that what happened in Sokoto happened in a university I was going there I was mm -hmm. going to the religious fanatics you know um b b because that was a different thing mm -hmm. um and we know and we know how how religion tends to make um very reasonable people Lose become their minds. something else okay exactly. hold that become thought hold else, that huh? thought I have to take that break I talked about now uh once okay. we come back we'll come back to this religious okay. fanaticism uh, uh point and then explore okay. a bit more what it is about us as a society that makes murder so easy. Lagos, if you just tuned in, hello to you. Good evening. I'm here on the show today with Nduka. Uh, and Nduka is a BBC journalist who just put together a short film commemorating 10 years after Alu 4. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. This is Nigeria Info 99.3. Don't go away. Zumbo, oh, why are you going looking like you want to beat somebody? See me see trouble, no. I beg, see what I order. See what they deliver, give me. It resembles. And I don't be online. Chai. Now, why I like to buy on Kimia? I feel return waiting and buy for free within seven days after I just be delivered to the home. And you tell me before. Now, Jumi, I'm going to buy from now. For first, that's in apparel. Now, me and you today. Zumbo. Zumbo. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes with free returns when you shop on Jumia. Terms and conditions apply. Jumia, your gimme day delivered. Make you believe I will plan. Check if follow enjoy the wonderment of the Super World Cup for Qatar with Coca-Cola. Summer any Coca-Cola product, no get white cover. Check under the counter. You go see simple code dial star eight zero one four star one star paid hash to join. Make you check get chance join the ticket for free. You fit win a week all expense paid trip to the Super World Cup for Qatar. Hey, even two hundred and fifty billion naira to buy airtime also day to win. If Santa terms and conditions they show. Coca-Cola na the official partner of the Super World Cup. Na SCCPC approve this promo. Jenny, baby. Ah, uh ah. -uh. See, this one where you do shine teeth like this. Nobody go no say them just serve you breakfast. Which breakfast? I'm not done. When I'm enjoying bed pack discounts at select stores with my custom pin card. I'm attending lifestyle events, networking, and renting my game. All thanks to my pink account. So you see, my dear, la la. The only thing serving me right now is a custom pink account, oh. <laughs> and there's more. Enjoy a 2% discount on business loans, free capacity building and mentoring, and access to pink network platforms when you open a pink account. Visit the Keystone branch nearest to you or call plus 234 700 2000 3000 to get started. Keystone Bank, we go together. There is a new way to move around Lagos from Lekki to Ushudu, from anywhere to everywhere. The Anaya app. With Anaya, you can book your
your nearest drive with just a click on your phone. Schedule a pickup for any time, anywhere. Track your driver on our live interactive map or even share a ride pool to save on travel costs. Try Anaya and you won't go back to your old ways of moving around in Lagos. Get your first drive for free using the promo code First Drive. Download your free Anaya app today from Google Play Store or Apple Store or visit Anaya.com. Anaya is spelled A N A Y E R. Anaya, the power to move. Look, or, or, look, summon the Oracle now. Greetings, my king. How can the Oracle be served? <laughs> you will tell me the secret to your power. How did that Keke move without a driver? <laughs> My secret is the power of 5G. Tell me more about the power of 5G. With high performance internet speeds, low to middle lag and buffering, multiple connections and quality data sharing, 5G will give you amazing things like remote surgeries, safe driving vehicles, wide and low and 2 gigabytes per second, smart home, instant language translation and so much more. 5G's amazing technology will change the way you experience life and the internet. Get ready to encounter the incredible and remember, no big juju now MTN 5G. Remember that the MoneyPal app is that friend you need for quick and easy loans from as low as 2,500 naira to 100,000 naira. Football don't start again, no! So they score go to don't start! Play, play, argument, plus the quarter, then wake up, no, don't start, too! Big, big, for details, don't try question like, what they win? What they win the score? Plus, plenty excitement, all of them don't start again, no! So therefore, betting the summer you go, go double check us and collect cash out so they celebrate your win. Plus, accumulate up bonus for all your selections there. Where did they wake up now? Make you go do your betting for betting.com so that you go begin back your football center again. That feeling, that's betting. Oh, lunch. Guys, I'm going for lunch. Please, put more steel. Mmm, nice meal. Ah, my chest. Suffering from heartburn and indigestion? Try Just Feed. My recommendation for the past 26 years. Just Feed is a brand of aluminium and magnesium hydroxide and Sinefica. Just Feed is available in suspension and tablets. Remedy for heartburn, indigestion, flatulence, and acidity. Just It. Now available in new packs. If symptoms persist after three days, please see your doctor. Read the leaflet inside. Look, or, or, look, summon the oracle now. Greetings, my king. How can the oracle be served? <laughs> you will tell me the secret to your power. How did that keke move without a driver? <laughs> My secret is the power of 5G. Tell me more about the power of 5G. <laughs> With high performance internet speeds, low to middle lag and buffering, multiple connections and quality data sharing, 5G will give you amazing things like remote surgeries, safe driving vehicles, wide and low and 2 gigabytes per second, smart home, instant language translation and so much more. 5G's amazing technology will change the way you experience life and the internet. Get ready to encounter the incredible and remember, no big juju, now MTN 5G. Imagine if the world revolved around you and you could do anything, like even make this ad go faster. I'm going to buy my first car this year. Or maybe slower. I'm going to buy my first car. Or even turn it to music. I'm gonna buy my first car. Or maybe just leave it as it is. I'm, on, I'm going to buy my first car this year. Yup, that feeling is second to none. And the best part is you decide the pace. Set the pace for a great life with a reliable trading partner that makes the world revolve around you. Download the OctaFX trading app now. OctaFX, focused on your goal. Africa is a continent of great people with great ambitions, great dreams, and great minds. Africa's great minds need an intelligent computer that can help them interpret their greatness successfully. No matter where you are in your journey to greatness, the HP 200G4 all-in-one PC bundle with 10th generation Intel Core i5 processor and 8GB RAM, 256GB memory will help you prepare today for tomorrow's success with its superior capabilities, fast performance, durable battery life, slim and sophisticated design. The HP 200G4 AIO PC with Intel Core i5 processor generation system makes learning and preparing for success easier and smarter. Start your journey to success today. Buy the HP 200G4 all-in-one PC bundle with 10th generation Intel Core i5 processor and 8GB RAM, 256GB memory. Available at Conga stores nationwide. Call 070-070-00-000 or visit www.conga.com for more information. We know it's lunchtime. No need to hide from your landlord this month. Get ahead of your rent with the MoneyPal app. 
Imagine trying to cook a quick meal after a long day. Only for gas to finish. Or just as your conversation is starting to reach for help. Call Curtis Pepper for phone service. Please charge all. Don't get caught up when it matters most. Switch to Airtel Postpay today and enjoy more calls, more data, and SMS for as low as 3,000 Naira. Visit any Airtel store to get started. Airtel, the smartphone network. Capri Caramel Candy, Capri Coffee, and your favorite Capri Buttermint Candy. Now there's lots more to share and enjoy. Oh, yeah. The Capri Candy is for every moment. There you are, riding in silence, both deep in thought. I bet you the driver thinks this ride should have cost more. If you were the passenger, you are sure you are overpaying. Never mind, let's just stay quiet. Or you can both download InDrive and agree on a fair price beforehand. InDrive, people driven. The InDrive online passenger transportation aggregator is not a taxi service. Find more information at www.indrive.com. Listen to this to understand the amazing power of 5G. Oops. Sorry, I played at a 5G speed. Now, here it is at the speed you're used to. With hyperfast internet speed, low to zero lag and buffering, multiple connections, and quality data sharing, 5G will give us amazing things like remote surgeries, self-driving vehicles, smart homes, two gigabytes per second downloads. Get ready to experience the incredible. And remember, no be juju, not MTN 5G. Listening to your number one station for talk. Your number one station for talk. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. It's 5.36. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. Ten years after the Ali fall, why is jungle justice still rampant? Helping me make sense of this is a journalist who just put together a short film uh, to mark the 10-year anniversary of this gruesome, gruesome horror piece of Nigeria's history. Um, uh, it happened in 2012. Um, some of you may remember it, uh, the gruesome murder uh, of Uguna Obuzo, Tekena Elkana, Chiadika Biringa, and Lloyd Toku. Um, it happened uh, in Port Harcourt in Alu, specifically uh, specifically a community in River State, uh, back in 2012, October 2012. Nduka Ojimo of the BBC is here with me. And before the break, we were talking about, well, what is it about us that um, turns off our good person switch and turns on our murder switch? Um, as a society, as a culture, um, do we make murder easy? And, you know, we talked about, well, okay, illiteracy is a huge part of it. If you look at the place where jungle justice happens, it typically happens in places that have a high population of uneducated people. And then I gave him the example of what happened in Sokoto a few months ago. And that's where we um, uh, left off on that break. Nduka, you, yeah. have, you had thoughts to share? Yeah, um, I was saying that that was a different thing altogether. Mm -hmm. um, and that um, even the best of us, when it comes to religion, when it comes to um, ethnicity, people tend to, to turn off that that good side, you know, mm. um, that, that you talked about. And, and we know religion is at, is at the height of it. Um, mm. Crusades have been have been fought for, um, for for to protect what people feel is dear to them. Um, mm. So I I don't really 
want to go into that, you know, even I'm being careful because it's one of those sensitive things in Nigeria where... It's such a sore say, point. Ex- exactly. Mm. And quite frankly, I think the the height of civilization should be human beings should be able to debate such things. We should be able to, to debate um, what people consider dogmatic religious beliefs that they don't think should be con- I think should be contested. I think everything under the sun should be contested. But mm. um, unfortunately, um, we, we can't do that um, because I, w- I would really like to explore that, that um, case in Sokoto State, you know, mm. and several other, there was one in Abuja in Lugbe, um, mm-hmm. um, uh, alleged blasphemy uh, and, and, and all that. But let, let's not go into all that, um, um, Sandra. However, let's talk about the, the, the one that happened in Lekki. Um, in Lagos, and it was for what, 100 naira, 50 naira change, mm-hmm. you know, and and the um, the Okada men um, murdered that that young young sound engineer. Yeah, 100 naira can barely buy you anything in Nigeria these anymore, days. Anymore, yeah. you know, yeah. anymore, yeah. So what is it that makes a group of people kill someone for for something as insignificant as 100 naira? Mm. You know, it's 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 that frustration, that pent up anger that they've been building for a while, and and they're they're looking for an avenue to to um, then explode. Back to the Alu case itself, in that community, there had been reported instances of robbery, um, um, petty petty thefts, you know, things that are going on there, mm. and it happened for a while. Mm. Um, in fact, one of the men that was convicted. Um, someone was telling me that uh, his house was robbed twice, mm. and um, in one of those occasions, um, they raped his 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 mother. Now I I don't I can't confirm all that, mm-hmm. um, but I don't know if you, if uh, those those videos are quite gruesome to even view. Um, but you could see this guy who was quite uh, ferocious with it. He had this 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 block anger. He used. You know, anger, but yes. uh, but again, it, it, it was that guy. Yeah, you could see the malice. You know that that's mm. that's what I was talking about earlier on. You know, yeah. so so I, I I can I can understand having that kind of anger. I can understand having a distrust in the system. But how about catching the thief, tying them up, keeping them hostage, forcing them to pay for whatever it is that the community has lost? Isn't that isn't that a safer uh, threshold than crossing it and becoming a, a, a murderous barbarian? You know, I, it, it's not clicking for me what yeah. makes people cross that line and go to set fire, set petrol, burn. Yeah, I mean, not, nothing nothing would justify it. Um, nothing on earth can justify Um such such i don't want to even use the word retaliation because that would even give it some some, some, some validity yeah e- exactly um but this guy and, and this is what i heard in our when i went back to do this people are saying oh look um that, that guy you know he felt very very bitter because of what happened to his mother so um when he saw those boys you know he he, he lost reason at that point mm. um because he had that that Experience. anger in him yeah. that, ex- exactly yeah. um but I, I don't think we should wish away you know the role of the judicial system in all this um i think it's, it's at the heart of why this is happening and we're, I, we're not the worst country on earth and i want to come back to that um, lack of faith yeah. in the system but i will i will do that after i share this information with lagos go ahead yes guys so it's cocktail week and from the 14th all the way to the 22nd of this month www.lagoscocktailweek.com So when next you're out with family and friends, ask for the MasterCard cocktail menu and pay with your MasterCard. And trust me, I earned for something really special. Thank you very much. So again, let's explore that lack of faith in the system, Indika. Yeah. What do you think the weakest links in the justice system, uh, system are? Is it the police's failure to instill law and order? Is it their inability to respond when law and order breaks down? Is it an inability to investigate? Is it more on the trial side? What do you think the weakest links are? <laughs> 
think is the is the general um lack of accountability and this impunity that happens across Nigeria. I don't know if, if you saw the video three weeks ago um, in Lagos, mm. where you had members of the NURTW, um, the factions were fighting. Um, yes. We had three imports, and, and we had three policemen there Just who ignoring behaved it. as if, like, like they're so lock, lackluster, like, Hey, you have, a, you, you have a state government mediating that fight eventually <laughs> at a fancy hotel. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you get a feeling in Nigeria that you know um, the police don't care. They don't think unless it's 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 a high profile case. They don't really think it's their duty, and um, that's at the heart of it. After the alu, um, after the clean of those of those boys, um, and and the rest, the governor then got involved. There's this thing the police does. It never makes any sense to me. It's called mass arrest. Um, so a crime is committed in this community. Mm. Um, we don't care if we're people. there. <laughs> yeah. So um, that also is, 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 is a failure of the system because one of the, um, the chief of ALU, and then we, he, he said he wasn't there, and he went to court. And they, they arrested him for what, a year and three months, and he spent two years clearing his name, you know, eventually. Uh, spent what he said, he spent five million naira and, and all that. That's another miscarriage of justice. You know, mm -hmm. this this thing where you have no forensic way of getting to the truth, mm -hmm. so you then arrest everyone. Um, I'll put that at the at the top of it. No one, no one is scared of the police. Let's let's be frank. Um, mm. there, there's lack of 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 faith in the system. I mean, no one is scared that something is going to be done. No one is scared of the repercussions. Um, and if, if you have money, sorry, Sandra, mm -hmm. chances are high that you can buy your way, you know, out of um out of most crimes in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was going to say one of those convicted over the Allo 4 was a policeman. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it, it does lend what, credence what are we talking about? to the yeah. complicity we're talking about. They, they were driving in the, in the patrol van and the first police set the stop there and um, they went down and they asked, you know, what's going on here? And people said, look, we've caught these robbers. And the police said, oh, hand, hand them over to us. And the guy said, no, we're not handing them. We want to, we want to deal with these ones. It doesn't make any sense that the police is even negotiating mm -hmm. with the police is supposed to be an authority of that's state. Right. You know, you have that authority backing you. We are right. like that's Nigeria. Right. You right. know, you should negotiate with people. They did that. I said, okay, okay, anyhow, and I want to make one. And they walked away. That's and right. the second set came and and the, the policeman said, Oh, now the thieves are disturb one up here. He came down from his car, used the barrel of his gun, you know, to hit one of the police. He got involved in it. Yeah. You know, so for an agent of the state to get involved at that level, it, it tells you how much reforms and we've been saying this for years now you know the police needs to be reformed you know mm -hmm. everyone agrees that something is wrong with the police it's not working right mm -hmm. um, but we don't really have the political will because the truth is the politicians benefiting from the system the way it is lagos join the conversation 0700 993 993 993 7190 um what uh, what are what are your thoughts on this story lagos uh, um what do you think are the reasons nigerians still resort to uh, mob justice have you ever witnessed a lynching have you ever tried to stop a lynching um what happened when you tried to stop it um do you remember this allo 4 case where were you when this allo 4 case thing um happened 0700-993-993-993-01465-7190 again to our regular callers remember today you're taking day off we want to hear from new people eh? just just today just today please don't be annoyed 99.3 hello Hello. Thank you for Thank calling. You. What's your name, sir? Um, good evening. Good evening. Can you turn your radio off for me? Okay, I've done that. All right, go ahead then. What's your name, sir? I want to remain uh, anonymous. That's fine. Welcome. Go ahead. Uh, I'm a policeman. Okay. I'm a policeman. Okay. Uh, I've been... I can say I'm so fortunate to this. Okay. To get you people online to because I do call in all of your program, mm. but I find it difficult to get to at times the line with the ringing. They will not pick mm. for several years now. We're glad you're Let's here today. Let's go to the topic on the ground. Thank you. Uh, I'm so surprised that the members of the public don't care to know about what is happening to the police authority itself. 
Okay. I've been in this job for the past 22 years now. This is my 22 years in service. Okay. The only time I was cheated with a uniform was when I was recruited and I finished from my training at police college in Kedja here. That was when I was cheated with all the normal kids. Apart from that very day, all whatever I wear, if you see a policeman dressing very neat, whatever you are seeing on him, he bought it with his money. Okay. So you're saying that that's... They don't cheat, and they don't cheat anybody. So is that why, is that why you... I, let me continue. I have a younger brother that died right from 2018 now. Mm. 2018, a younger brother of mine mm -hmm. that died right from 2018. Mm -hmm. The entitlement, we have been battling with the entitlement up to now, from now to tomorrow. We have not gotten penny. So I understand what you're saying and the plight of tomorrow, policemen, tomorrow, the, 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 the plight of policemen, sir, the plight of policemen is not news to Nigerians, but I do have a question for you. If the conditions of service are so unpalatable, why do you stay in service? Why do you remain a policeman? Why do I? Why do you remain in policeman? A, a policeman. Why not leave the force and do something where, else? Where, where is the job opportunity? People graduated from school every day. NYC on day on, every, on on each year, people serve and get their certificate as. Yes, so, 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 so I agree. Yes, I, I agree as, that I agree. As I'm talking to you. As I'm talking to you, my first son graduated from University of Illinois. I agree that the I mean, jobs I are not there. Now, I feed him on daily basis. Sir, I agree that the jobs that are not there. Have job. Sir, I agree Where that the job jobs. Outside? I agree that the jobs Today, are not we'll there. Be talking, we'll be talking, however, me, we'll be, uh, however, hello, 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 please, however. Please. Please. No, no, no. Uh, no uh, me, I am, listen I'm listening to you, but you also have to listen to me. me. Uh, listen to me. I'm listening to you, but you also have to listen okay. to me. Today, so, so no, I'm no, saying, no, no, no. hold on, sir. Mm. I'm no, saying, I, I understand that the jobs are not there. I understand that the conditions for servicemen is deplorable. But you have, yes. you have two choices. Choice number one, leave the force. Mm -hmm. Choice number two, uh -huh. stay in the force and do the job for which you join the force, which is yeah, when you see jungle justice, you step in and stop it, not, uh, um, you know. Step in, step in and stop it. You do do that. Okay. But let me tell you, a situation whereby a policeman is being killed mm. at the point of stopping that jungle justice, mm. it will remind him and his family. Hmm. I understand that. Thank you so much for calling us. We appreciate it. He does raise a valid point. Uh, what's the incentive for the police officers to try and intervene uh, at a scene of a, a crime, of mob justice going on, uh, when he could get killed? And if he does get killed, um, that's it. You know, the state doesn't recognize him. The state doesn't take care of his family, et cetera, et cetera. Anduka, what do you think about that? I totally understand his plight. Um, however, I can't I can't agree uh, with with what he said. Um, I think it's the job. I think it is what what the job entails. Um, it, it's a it's a it's a tough job. It's a it's it's a job that borders on life and death, and that's why not everyone can do it. But once you sign up to be um, a police officer, you know it's um, it's a job that that you, you understand you're putting your life on the line for others you know first and foremost and mm. he, he he needs to um appreciate we, we of course understand um the challenges that the police um officers in nigeria face mm -hmm. yeah we, we, we can't discount that mm -hmm. that is a fact mm -hmm. however however um the duty of of police officers is to um, save lives and property uh, i don't think um that can be um be discarded because um you're not incentivized to do your job mm, nduka thank you so much for telling this story reminding nigerians about this story and joining me on hard facts today to talk about it thank you very Thanks much for having for your me time. sandra all right, All right then. Lagos, before we take a long break, I have more information to share with you, yes? Yes, this is from Sanlam, Nigeria. So did you know that Sanlam is the largest insurer on the African continent? 
Sanlam is a diversified financial service company founded in South Africa with a strong presence in over 33 countries on the African continent and presence in India, Malaysia and selected developed markets. Sanlam is also a purpose-led organization with all efforts centered around helping customers and people in general live with confidence and of course there is more to that. Sanlam also promotes financial inclusion, transformation and empowerment through its broad product and financial advice offering, inclusive culture and partnership approach. Sanlam has, um, Sanlam has proven track record of delivering superior value to clients, employees, shareholders and broader society focusing on protecting customers' wealth and peace of mind and empowerment empowering them to live confidently. So you can now see why FBN Insurance has chosen to transform to Sanlam, Nigeria. Sanlam, live with confidence. Thank you very much. All right, we'll take a break now. Huh? When we come back from this break, I have guests joining me at 6.15. Lagos, I know you have thoughts about this uh, story that we just um, explored on today's Big Heart Fact. Hopefully there's some time in the future to come back to it. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. Don't go away. You, you summon the oracle now. <laughs>